is great with sharing the PowerPoint. Awesome. So today we'll be talking all about SDC STEM resources. My name is Elizabeth Islas, pronoun she, her, hers, ella. I'm the director of the Women's Resource Center, and I'm joined by multiple really amazing staff on SDSU campus that do super remarkable work to support students in STEM. So you'll be hearing all about the services that they provide. Before we delve into that, though, I do want to give a land acknowledgement. So I'll be reading um, the land acknowledgement now. For millennia, the Kumeyaay people have been a part of this land. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the San Diego State community, we acknowledge this legacy. We promote this balance and harmony. We find inspiration from this land, the land of the Kumeyaay. And I also want to extend an invitation to the rest of our Women in STEM support group session. So after this, we'll have a total of three more sessions on the 24th. There will be a student-led um, space to talk more about as you use some resources, so everything that's covered today. And then after that in April, we'll be joined by Dr. Nelly Tran, who will talk about how to navigate sexist microaggressions. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Marissa. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Marisa Reynoso. I am the assistant director in the College of Sciences Student Success Center. Uh, we're located, our physical space is located in GMCS on the fourth floor. Um, go ahead and move me to the next slide if you can. I want to talk to you all a little bit about some of the services that we provide to undergraduate students. Um, and I want to uh, kind of give special attention to some of the services that are being offered right now, considering COVID-19 and us being in a virtual world. Um, if you take a look at your screen here on the left, the red shows you just some of the services that we offer, right? So we are um, not just an advising center like some students, uh, you know, look at us as we are an all encompassing success center. So what we do in the center of your screen here, you can see services at a glance. Yes, we do help you with course planning and registration assistance, but other things besides that, we also help with just understanding of your general education and your degree evaluation. We can sit down with you, kind of go through those things together, um, exploring or declaring a college of science major or minor. Um, we have strong connections with all of the College of Science major advisors, so we are able to get you connected with them and, you know, get good information from, from them to you. Um, another thing, university policies, petition assistance, um, events and, and workshops are huge. We are fully staffed with peer mentors, so what that means is every semester, we have a great uh, group of peer mentors, students who are also in the College of Sciences that can uh, coordinate events that reach a student population specifically to yours, right? So in the center of your screen here, you see Visit Us and it has our website if you wanna jot that down. If you go to our website, there's a tab called Events and it will show you every event that our peer mentors have scheduled for this semester by date. And um, some of those include, you know, getting involved in researching, um, how to write a resume, um, you know, how to be more, what was the word here? How to get connected with uh, the health professions advising office and being competitive there. Um, those are just to name a few, but you know, we always have different events happening. So we encourage you to check that out. Now in, involved with the, the virtual world, we wanna move over to this blue screen on the side here, daily open advising sessions. And this is kind of along what a lot of the university is calling their open advising or their, their front desk, virtual front desk, right? So our peer mentors are on shift every day, Monday through Thursday from nine to four. Anytime during that time, you can click onto that link and get somebody live, right? They can kind of triage your questions. They're, you know, trained to answer a lot of your advising questions and how to make referrals. And if they can't answer your questions, they will, you know, 
refer you over to a professional advisor myself or some of my colleagues in the College of Science Student Success Center. So we always kind of like to throw that one out there and leave you on that lasting message because we like for there to be a place that you can go at any time to get assistance considering you know we're not on campus physically. That is the most of it for me. Any questions? Awesome. Well, again, I encourage you to uh, check out our website. You can see a lot more about us. Um, there's also instructions there on how to set up an appointment with me or any of the professional advisors there and all the, the information that I discussed with you today. Thank you. Hi, it's Alejandro Rodriguez, uh, pronouns is he, him, his. Uh, career counselor with career services. Uh, recently, I switched to STEM, so I'm the liaison to STEM uh, students and programs. And uh, I've been here for a long, long time, been doing counseling, career counseling for a lot of different colleges, including health, human services, education. Now I'm doing sciences, engineers, a little bit of everything that you can see for here. Uh, so if you want to switch to uh, my next slide, please. So, I mean, there's so much that, 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 uh, that we do, that we're involved with, that it's kind of hard to encapsulate everything. But uh, first of all, we work with students from starting your know, first year all the way to alumni who come back. You even have alumni who have been out there for 20 years and they need to they switch to another field and we help them do that as well. Although the access to alumni has been changing over the years, sometimes they have only six. That's the so way. Just wanted to give you an idea of the school services. Now, uh, so appointments, uh, we do appointments, and uh, you can schedule those with us, career counselors, as I said, I'm liaison to STEM. Uh, although I see students from other, other areas as well. And even my colleagues, sometimes, if, if you cannot get an appointment with me, they will also see, right? So uh, we also have career peers. So these are students who have been trained uh, to cover their various topics like resume reviews, cover letters, and, and, and questions about career counseling. Uh, um, so again, they're usually available virtually and they are available through the front desk. Now our hours and then the access has changed obviously because of, of uh, COVID, right? Uh, so in the last year, there have been some changes. Now, some of the topics that uh, typically we cover are, uh, as you can see here, resumes, cover letters. Um, so we do a lot of those. I, I would probably say thousands of those, especially before the career fair. Uh, we have something called WrestleMania. It's an event either a day or two days prior to the fair where we do uh, like a massive resume review. Other resume reviews can be done at any any time you need right to make an appointment and see us so um another one that comes up quite a bit is the jobs or internship search so that's very very uh, popular topic obviously you're here you uh, get a degree because you want to get a job um in the end right uh, after you graduate or right before graduation so uh so the other thing is um that you will start early and you want to do an internship. So one thing I strongly encourage you to do is uh, get an internship as, as soon as you can, uh, because when you graduate, uh, you're going to have a, a, a solid resume. You're going to have a, a way to tell the employer, you know, I've been practicing what I've been learning in class. And I can tell you that those who are more successful typically have some kind of experience before graduation. So we help you with that kind of search. Now we have a person in our department who is the industry coordinator as well. Uh, again, uh, most of the questions revolve around how do I find an internship? How soon can I find an internship? How do I go about doing that? Now you notice a big logo there on the slide, a handshake. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm putting that in, I have a section in the middle, right? Uh, kind of talks about that quite a bit. It's, it's like a sort of hub. It's like our, our uh, management system where everything revolves around, you know, from appointments, uh, uh, workshops, um, they'll be promoted through there. Um, so it, before I jump there, just a couple of the topics, major selection career options. So many times you can have students who 
either are confused about. If, if you, uh, you don't know what major you want to go for, or you're in a current major, you're not sure that's the one you want, um, you're lost, I mean, you can talk to us. So we can, uh, there's different ways uh, to really help you with that. Either just from asking basic questions all the way to maybe referring to take an assessment. So an assessment is uh, it's an inventory where you, you answer questions based on your interest or personality. And in the end, there'll be some results that may give you some options that maybe you didn't consider before. Or it may confirm what you were thinking about doing. So again, it can go in a lot of different ways. But, but again, it starts by having a conversation with us. So, I certainly encourage you, if you're not confident about where you're going uh, with your major, it doesn't feel right, you need a small adjustment, maybe you're in electrical engineering, and maybe computer engineering is a better match. So again, you can have those conversations with us. And again, starting with Handshake, so you have the link, uh, as you can see, um, slot. And if you have a research website, uh, it's the link there as well. So the appointments you can search for jobs and internships uh two weeks ago we had about 100 internships on hand now we recommend that students uh go through handshake as one of the main uh sources for jobs and internships because the come to us they they sign up they create a profile because they want our students they want our graduates so that would be the first place I would recommend. Not the only place, of course. I mean, you gotta use every resource that is available, but definitely start with Handshake and see what comes up. There's a lot of ways to search the filters. They're answered by major, you know, different ways. Again, by location. And right now, there's many virtual, actually there's virtual jobs and internships. Uh, Addison who secured a job in Texas, but she doesn't have to go all the way there. So going to be able to work from home so again right now some employers are very open to doing that as you probably heard right so definitely uh that has created some opportunities where you don't have to travel uh so events that's very important there's workshops there's sessions there's panels there's i mean there's hundreds of uh, sessions given by employers all of the uh, what these employers want to do is show these students this is who we are this is the kind of major we want this is the kind of opportunities we have available, and this is how you apply. I mean, a lot of them are going to have the sessions. So if you do search their events, uh, you can just see they, or you can use filters to look for keywords. I mean, Google had a session that had thousands of people sign up for, like, uh, last semester. So, again, you don't know who's coming up, who's going to come up with the session. So at any given time, something new may come up. So definitely encourage you to explore it. And if you have questions about it, again, any questions about that, how to use it, how to access resources, when to start, should I apply to graduate school, you know, anything like that, you can come to us and, and schedule an appointment. As I said, uh, you can do it through through uh, Handshake. Uh, so the other thing is career fairs. We have had some virtual fairs that you probably know. Uh, and then October is a STEM month. So so keep that in mind, put it on your calendar. Maybe you already know. But anyway, I'm just telling you again. Uh, that that's what we have our STEM fair. Now it doesn't mean that STEM employers all come to that fair. Uh, it's just that's the day when or that event. That's when we have the, the, the biggest concentration of employers, right? The STEM disciplines. But uh, but we have STEM employers for all our uh, different fairs. Like we just had our uh, career fair. That's for all majors. Now I know we have a, a education service, which is not typically STEM fair. But then we have the just in time fair coming up in April. Again, it's listed in handshake. You can start to see employers are listed, and there'll be some STEM employers there as well. So again, um, they come through several of the major fairs, and and also of course the STEM fair. And this uh, the the other fair that is is coming up next semester is a fall career fair in September. So so again, there's also many events around STEM month. Uh, so, so again, uh, keep keep that uh, keep an eye on it. Now, uh, ASIM program or AMP, um, that, that's another program that uh, it's available to students who uh, who need to make, meet with a professional mentor who want to be, say, uh, uh, guided. Uh, they want to ask questions, maybe to someone who's doing a engineer, someone who's in the field, who's been there for a long time. Uh, so, so again, 
Um, you can connect right now. I think the registration is closed, but it's done every every semester, fall and spring. So if you go to our website, you're gonna see AMP. You know, there's a page just for that. And you can see uh, you know, uh, how you can register. And then there's about 1,800 mentors who have volunteered to do that. So, so mentors, um, again, they volunteer to do that. They, they're open, they wanna help our students. Most of them are alumni, so they're aspects. So, so keep that in mind. And then the virtual desk uh, link is right there. So if you have you any question, you know, any problem, any any question about access, you can reach out to your front desk during regular hours. Anyway, that's uh, what I like to share today. Uh, do you have any questions, complaints, <laughs> concerns? <laughs> Anything that starts with a C. C. Uh, so anything? And I think yeah, I, I got my ten minutes now. Just keeping an eye on it. Does it look like? Okay, I'll. Right, I'll, I'll take a pause here. I'm gonna switch out. Just my. All right, good evening, everybody. Elspeth, am I allowed to go ahead and start sharing my screen? Okay. Um, yes. So bear with me, you guys. I don't give a lot of virtual presentations. I do a lot more one-on-one -on -one meetings, but I'll do the best that I can here. So my name is Michelle Ultimus, and I am the program manager for a program here at SDSU called the Initiative for Maximizing Student Development, or IMSD for school. Um, but before I tell you a little bit more about my program specifically, um, I wanted to let you guys know that IMSD is part of a much larger group of programs on campus called the Center for the Advancement of Students in Academia, or CASA for short. So CASA, consists of about 16 different student support programs that all have the same shared goal of promoting you guys and promoting your development to become the next generation of research scientists, health professionals, and STEM educators. So as you might be able to tell from that broad mission statement, the programs that we offer through CASA are very diverse in what we offer to students. Um, through each program. Some of our programs provide support to students looking to become STEM teachers and can give you scholarships or um, mentor you through getting the proper credentials and certifications to become a teacher if that's of interest to you. Some of our programs um, offer advising to students who want to get into the health professions and can help you through the application process for graduate schools for the health professions. Some of our programs offer financial support for you guys to conduct research on campus as undergraduate researchers. Some of our programs offer resources to help you in applying to graduate school. And others kind of give you a combination of a lot of these different benefits. Um, one important thing that I did want to note, though, is that a lot of CASA programs do require you to apply in order to participate in them. Not all of them, but many have an application and an acceptance process. Um, and the application processes uh, have different deadlines and different eligibility requirements depending on which program you're looking to apply to. So given that, um, and given how diverse our programs are, I thought the, one of the most useful things that I could do was kind of show you guys our website um, and kind of point out what I think are, you know, some important places to look for information and resources if you're interested in any of the benefits that I've mentioned so far. Um, can you guys see my see this website? Um, Elspeth, could you just let me know if it's showing up? Yes, All right, we can. Yeah. So, um, like I mentioned, we have 16, approximately 16 different programs within CASA. So if you're wondering which ones am I eligible for and you're looking for a place to start, I recommend going to our website, casa.sdsu.edu, going to our programs tab, um, and then the programs are divided by eligibility based off of where you are in your education so far. So if you're a freshman through a senior at SDSU, then you wanna click on one of those tabs right here to see what programs you'd be eligible for. Um, just as an example, I'll click on programs for juniors 
and you can see that all of the programs that juniors at SDSU are eligible to apply for are listed here. Underneath the program name, it'll give you a short description of what the program offers, probably what the eligibility requirements are, if there are any, a website for more information, um, a person to contact for more information, and a deadline to submit, submit your application if you're interested in applying. Um, I also did want to point out that a lot of the, uh, this website isn't uh, updated that often. And so a lot of the program descriptions have like physical phone numbers for offices on campus to call. I wouldn't recommend trying to call these numbers as people aren't really in their office right now. Um, I would look for an email if you could, click on the program specific website to look for an email to contact somebody. And if you can't find that, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I can kind of point you in the right direction of who, who to reach out to if you're looking for more information. You can find um, my contact information by scrolling down the junior or senior tab and finding IMSD. And I'm right here, Michelle Altimus, with my email. Um, so that is one of the main places that I wanted to point your attention to on our website. I also thought it was important if any of you guys are interested in going to grad school to note that we have this opportunities tab with two kind of um, very extensive databases. So the first is this summer research opportunities tab, um, which has tons of summer research programs across at different universities across the country. Um, the first tab is all programs that are open to all STEM majors and then um, the subsequent tabs kind of break down opportunities for summer research based off of discipline. Um, and as you can see here, um, we have a, a ton of summer research programs, the name of the program, the website that you can go to for more information, a description, a short description about the program and the application due date. These summer research programs are really great for anybody who is interested in applying to graduate school in the future because it gives you an opportunity to get research, ex more research experience. Um, it gives you the opportunity to visit a campus that you might be interested in attending for graduate school. Most of these summer research programs will pay you a stipend for participating throughout the summer for you know, five to 10 weeks, depending on the program. Um, and a lot of these summer research programs also give you resources to apply to graduate school. So that could be GRE prep, that could be um, kind of uh, workshops to work on your personal statements for your graduate school applications, interview prep, things like that. So highly recommend looking into summer research programs if you'd like to go to grad school one day. Um, and then the other tab that I mentioned under opportunities is our graduate school preview day sheet. And this one's kind of similar, uh, but instead of summer research programs, this is for preview days for graduate school programs. So a lot of graduate programs will invite prospective students onto their campus for one day or a weekend um, during the academic year so that you can visit the campus, get a sense of it, talk to faculty, talk to current graduate students um, and see if that program is a good fit for you and your goals and somewhere that you'd like to enroll in the future. So again, highly recommend checking out this database if um, you're interested in learning more about different graduate programs. Um, and now I will go back to our PowerPoint slide and plug a little bit about my program. Um, as I alluded to earlier, I am the program manager for IMSD and I work very closely with another CASA program called the MARC program. And both of our programs are currently accepting applications for new students. Um, so a little bit about these two programs, we're both undergraduate research training programs with the goal of increasing the number of undergraduate students from underrepresented backgrounds who are competitive applicants to get into PhD programs immediately after you finish your undergrad. Some of the ways that we do this are by paying you to do research on campus, um, providing year-round mentoring and professional development workshops, uh, providing financial support to pay for your graduate school applications, providing GRE prep, um, among other benefits. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, IMSD accepts applications all year round um, for students that have at least one year left of coursework at SDSU. I've included here a uh, link to our application page and also a link to a flyer about our program if you'd like to learn more. 
um, as well as the MARC program. Their application page is linked here as well as their flyer, their recruitment flyer. The MARC program is a little bit different. They do have a specific application due date, which is April 14th, coming up in about a month. And you have to apply to the MARC program when you have exactly two years remaining at SDSU. So this upcoming April 14th deadline is for students that will be graduating in spring 2023. Um, and last but not least, I mentioned that IMSD and MARC both provide year round uh, professional development workshops for our students. Um, many of those professional development workshops are also open to anybody. Um, and our next workshop is actually this Friday. It's our annual STEM post PhD panel. Um, I included a link down here in the notes. I think Elspeth said that she would share this presentation with you all. So you can access that there. Um, I can also copy it and put it into the chat. Uh, I'll do that when I'm done with my presentation. Um, but just to give you an idea, that link is to this flyer. It tells you about um, our STEM post PhD panel. Uh, it will be this Friday from 2 to 4.30 PM. We'll have nine different SDSU alumni who went off to graduate school, got their PhDs, are now working in a STEM field. Um, and they can talk about their experiences with you guys. So if you would like to attend that, just click this registration link right here um, and you'll automatically get the Zoom link to attend. And that is it for me. Awesome, thank you so much. Go ahead and start sharing my screen again. Go. Okay, that is me. Can I check really quickly? Am I sounding clear? It looks a little glitchy. You are sounding clear to me. Awesome. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I'm Bianca Portal Truitt. I'm the career and internship coordinator for um, College of Engineering, and I work out of the Center for Student Success in Engineering. Um, if we want to go to the next slide, I included a couple of flyers here. Um, so I kept my slide pretty simple, just kind of wanted to introduce you to some of the things that the center offers. When we're on campus, we actually have a physical space in um, E221. We would love for you all to visit us once um, we are back on campus, like in that physical space. However, until then, we've completely switched over to virtual um, services. So. Uh, we now operate off of a platform called Navigate. If you see, there's that link that is right there toward the bottom of the slide. And if you go to that Navigate link, that will take you to all the different options of ways that you can sign up and um, access some of these resources, including um, all the way on the left, there is the flyer for tutoring. So one of the services that we offer within the center is tutoring. Um, you'll see toward the bottom half of that flyer. I know it's small right now, but hopefully you can look at it more on your own time, but uh, it lists specific courses that we have tutoring um, being offered in this semester. So those change every semester. They typically pick those based on which are kind of um, courses that are some of the more challenging ones that we've been able to see um, our students need a little bit of extra support in. So um, if you want to access tutoring, that is now op an option that is virtual. Um, and that is actually offered through the MESA program. If you're familiar with the um, Math, Engineering and Science Achievement Program, they are the ones who kind of partner with us in the center and they offer this tutoring. So awesome resource. Um, the other major thing that we have is advising, academic advising. So um, we have a team of peer advisors. They are especially trained on how to help y'all with your um, lower division advising, how to choose your classes, how to read your degree evaluation, your my map, um, even honestly, any questions you have about should I maybe take this professor or that professor or what order should I take these classes in? It's great to get their input because these are students who have already um, been a little bit further along in their education. And a lot of times they've gone through some of those courses and some of those choices and they're able to give you even some of that kind of just 
uh, colloquial type of like information on top of helping you be able to pick the right classes, get through your degree. So our peer advisors are wonderful. So there are a team of them that are um, accessible every single day. Again, you can make those peer advising appointments through that same one link that I included on here. And um, they will be able to help you with any questions that you have in terms of academic advising. Another option uh, in terms of academic advising though, pertains to that second um, flyer on there where it says student affairs, virtual office hours. That is advising that is being offered this semester through um, Teresa Garcia, the assistant dean of student affairs for the College of Engineering, and also Donovan Geiger, who is the student success coordinator. So both of them have virtual office hours, and they would also love to advise on anything academic related, just um, school student success related. So you can kind of access, the, access them through those specific time frames or the peer advisors through any time frame really they work every day um, typical office hours and then lastly um, the third function that we have in our center is my function so i'm the uh, career and internship coordinator and i also offer advising every day and that can be advising on um, your internship search, maybe how to create your first resume, how to use LinkedIn successfully, um, includes um, even questions around salary negotiation, very open with that. My background is I was a recruiter. And so being kind of on the other side and having the interviews with candidates and negotiating salaries and all of those things, I love to be able to impart that type of experience onto students who maybe um, have some questions around that. So every day I take appointments, please, please, please feel free to make one with me and we can talk about any place that you are at in your internship or career search. Um, the other part of my job, in addition to one-on-one -on -one advising with students, is planning events. So one um, event series that we have going on is the career and engineering um, panel. And so approximately once a month, we highlight one of our engineering majors and we um, have a panel. So for example, next week, Friday, we have our electrical engineering panel and we are inviting um, local engineers who are in the electrical engineering space to jump onto Zoom and answer some questions about their experience in that career, um, answer questions from the student virtual audience. So on that uh, flyer that is here on the right, at the very bottom, you'll see there's a Zoom link. That is how you would access all of the panels. They'll be at that same link. Um, and we'd love to have you attend. I would also encourage you, even if you are not an electrical engineering major, Say you were a mechanical major and you missed the mechanical uh, panel that was in November. I totally recommend coming to these panels because there's so much crossover between the engineering majors. For example, next week already we have signed up um, Qualcomm, Raytheon, um, SDG&E. So if you maybe want to work at one of those companies or organizations, even in a different sector, it would be great to come and hear from um, folks who are working there. So please feel free to attend those and uh, visit us via an appointment at that link that I included. And I think that I will stop there. Hi everybody, my name is Bianca Avina. I am the Assistant Director for the SDSU Feminine Program, as well as the Women in Engineering Program. Um, the reason the Feminine Program isn't on here, it is our K through 12 side of the College of Engineering. Um, next slide, please. So I totally dropped the ball and forgot to put our website on here. So I'm going to just throw it in the chat and then I just update it. So when Elizabeth downloads the PowerPoint, it's already updated. Um, but a little bit about the Women in Engineering program. We actually just started this program. I work with a team of two of us. It's myself and Michelle Bunn, um, who is a director. She, we pretty much started talking about it in the summer of 2019. And by November, we were like, let's do this, let's go. So what it really is, it's not only for students. So what the program really was about when we created it was cultivating a space for these female students. Now it's sciences, STEM all together. Everybody is usually welcome. Um, it's just 
specifically for this college, the numbers are really, really low in regards to the gender gap. You have really, really high numbers of men, not only within the undergrad, grad school, even in the workforce. Actually, it's even worse in the workforce. So we decided this is something that we needed. And as you can see here on the little red flow chart, there are three components. We work with the WE faculty. So not only do we support the students, we work with these faculty who of however many men, male faculty, we had nine female, I think it was 60 to nine um, female uh, faculty members. And we were able to bump that up to 12 last fall. So exciting things. So we work with not only students, we work with faculty, we work with K through 12. And as you can see, we undergrad and graduate. Um, some of those really cool things that we do, the resources that we have um, are, one of them is WeChat. Uh, we would have a faculty member come. She would spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes talking about her research. And then the rest was really just a message of empowerment. Um, sometimes it was imposter syndrome once you get into the workforce. Sometimes it's that work-life balance. We had questions of some of our students really truly believed once you decide to become a mom, you have to leave that STEM background behind. So these were different topics that we decided needed to be kind of discussed. So the WeChats were really great for the faculty um, to kind of come and, and speak on that. Um, and then we move on to STEM talks, which you see in the middle, our upcoming one is with uh, NAVAIR. Those, they are often a panel. They're all female engineers who come on to this panel. Some alumni, but usually a mix. Um, and it's really similar. They kind of, they talk a little bit about the program, internship opportunities, and then each of the panelists goes through and they talk about their academic and career paths. And the reason we want that is because like I said, some of the questions that students are asking, we want answered by these industry people who not just me, myself answering it here, we wanna know how they're doing it. So they come and they really are vulnerable. They open up themselves to our students and they, some of them just lay it all out. Some talk about mental health, different things like that. Um, and then we always have like a 20 to 30 minute Q&A session because Q&A is huge. So we do have this last one with NABR. We had this semester Northrop Grumman. We just finished one with Motorola and this is NABR. But those are the STEM talks. Um, really great opportunity to network. You have access to these amazing panelists in the chat, in the Q&A. So highly recommend you register for those. Um, Another one I want to talk about looking at the little purple flyer is we do coffee hour. Now this is very, very different. This is, as you can see, three times in the semester where we come in for one hour. We have no structure whatsoever of this coffee hour. Students come to us and they just talk. Sometimes they say, I'm feeling so drained and unsupported by the college. And this is a safe space where we can say, bring it all. Tell us exactly how you feel. And then when we have a monthly meeting with the dean and assistant, uh, Dean Garcia, we go and say, this is what these students are saying. They feel unsupported and it's unsupported in X, Y, and Z. Um, this last one that we had on March 5th, people were, were talking about tutoring. Some were like, ooh, what's SI, supplemental instruction? What about Mesa tutoring? Somebody had gone to everything. So it was like, I went to here, this is what it was like. I went here, this is what it was like. And it was literally just a conversation of resources. So I highly, highly encourage you. And you don't have to be an engineering student. You can be a scientist, that's totally fine. It's just a safe space for you to come and talk to us. We will answer your questions. Sometimes we get students who are like, I've been emailing my advisor for months and you just answered my question in two minutes. So just a really awesome safe space for that. So definitely come on April 9th. Um, and I, like I said, I, in the chat, put our website, everything is on the website, but I do also want to kind of toggle down to the Instagram and Twitter. I post everything on our at SDSU underscore we Instagram and Twitter. We have flyers on there. Even sometimes when like the Mesa uh, program will post something, I'll try to get on there and repost it. Even the Women's Resource Center, I reposted the last one. I'm trying to get a lot better at that. Um, but I know that is something we have our phones in front of us all the time. If you slide past STEM talk, just click on that link, register really quickly, and just keep on scrolling. So there, it's, I'm everywhere. I send out emails, I post it on social media. I usually start my introduction to uh, events like, hi, my name is Bianca Vina. Yes, I'm the one who's been emailing you nonstop for the last two weeks. That is me. 
Um, so please, please come to our events and in our coffee hour and all of that. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about volunteer opportunities with a little asterisk there. Usually in person, we love to reach out to um, the, our women in engineering students and we say, hey, this is what we're doing. We're doing an outreach event with high schoolers. And that's usually where we get all the volunteers because students are like, heck yes, I get to like actually do STEM with younger kids. Absolutely. So once we finally eventually go back, reach out to us. We almost always have volunteer opportunities. Highly encourage um, you to also look into that. And another really great resource, our YouTube channel, as you can see here, it's just SDSU Seminar. Um, all of our past STEM talks, so let's say you've missed one, we've had some with Otter Products, as I mentioned, Northrop, Motorola, different um, companies. We record them, ask them if it's okay. Once they've gone through it and seen it and made sure they didn't say anything too, too vulnerable that we needed to cut out, they'll let us put it on YouTube. So you are more than welcome to go back, look at those, even the Q&A is in there, um, but an awesome, awesome resource. Um, again, I didn't put the link, the link is in the chat. If you go in there on our website, all of this information is in there. All of our flyers, we try to keep up to date. Um, even some of our WE faculty, so the female faculty, if you're interested in the labs, they have that information there. Some of them are like, I need an undergrad, I need a grad student, I need a PhD student. Everything is listed there. We try to make it very streamlined. You just go to that website and you're able to find everything. Um, but you can absolutely always email me. Um, I will answer any question that I can. And if I can't, I will either get that answer for you or I will direct you. Um, I know I went to grad school with Elizabeth and one of the biggest thing was don't just send somebody to an office. I'm gonna let them know that you're on your way there. And that's exactly what I practice. So let's say, you're like, oh, I really need something about the Women's Resource Center. I'm going to shoot Elizabeth a quick email and say, hey, this is my student. These are her questions. Sh be ready because she's coming. So, but yeah, it's a little bit about us. I know it's, it's a very, very new program. Um, you don't have to apply to be a part of it. Really, there's no you're in, you're not. We support the female. I mean, everyone, of course, but specifically, we support the female students within STEM. Um, so you don't have to be a part of anything to attend anything. Just please attend, register, come check it out. If you like it and you want to keep coming, awesome. If you're like, oh, this is a little crazy, that's okay too. But I definitely encourage you to give it a shot. Um, and I think that's all. Lovely. Thank you all so much. I will go ahead and stop recording now so that folks can ask some questions.